In this lesson, we're going to discuss the different ways there are to prove that triangles are similar. And to start things off here, we have what's known as the angle-angle similarity postulate. And that's just abbreviated angle-angle similarity. Now this says that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. Now in our diagram here, it might appear at first glance that there aren't two angles in one triangle that are congruent to two angles in the other triangle, but we shouldn't just go off of what's labeled for us. There's additional information we can find here. In fact, we can find the measure of the third angle in each triangle. For the first triangle, we could add 50 and 60 together to get 110. And we could subtract that from 180, since we know that's the sum of the angles in any triangle. And we'd find that angle B measures 70 degrees. And we could do very much the same thing for the other triangle. If we added 70 and 50 together, we'd get 120. And we could subtract that from 180 we'd find there's 60 degrees in the measure of angle F here. And now it definitely appears that there are two angles in one triangle that are congruent to two angles in the other triangle. Angle A here is congruent to angle E over here, and angle C here is congruent to angle F over here. So we can apply the angle-angle similarity postulate to prove these triangles are similar. Now let's be very clear and outline what we mean by angle-angle here as well. One pair of angles we have is angle A, which is congruent to angle E. And the other pair we have is angle C, which is congruent to angle F. Again, that's what's meant by angle-angle here. Now let's summarize this with a similarity statement and a justification. I'm going to name the first triangle triangle ABC. And let's remember that when we write a similarity statement, we have to be careful to match things up the right way. Triangle ABC is similar to... Well, we have to be careful not to just name the second triangle alphabetically, because it might not match up that way. In fact, angle A corresponds to angle E in the other triangle. Those are the 50 degree angles. And angle B corresponds to angle D. And angle C corresponds to angle F. So again, be careful to match things up when you write a similarity statement. And our justification here would be by the angle-angle similarity postulate. So again, as a reminder, that's a similarity statement. And the angle-angle similarity postulate was our justification here. Now there's also what's known as the angle-angle-angle similarity postulate. But if you take a second and think about that, if we um, knew the two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another triangle, it forces the third angle in each triangle to be congruent to each other anyway, so it's actually unnecessary to ever have to use this. It's sort of overdoing things. The angle-angle similarity postulate is enough. The next way we have to prove that triangles are similar is what's known as the side-side-side similarity theorem, which is just abbreviated side-side-side similarity. And this says that if the three sets of corresponding sides of two triangles are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So to match up corresponding side lengths in these two triangles, I think it makes sense that the shortest side in this triangle corresponds with the shortest side in this one, and the largest side of this triangle will correspond with the largest side over here, and the medium side in this one, which I'll use a cloud around, corresponds to the medium side over here. Now let's look at the ratios of corresponding side measures. We have 9 to 3, which would reduce to 3 to 1. We have 12 to 4, which would reduce to 3 to 1. And we have 15 to 5, which also reduces to 3 to 1. So one way to think of this is it's like triangle RLZ gets scaled up by a factor of 3 to form triangle GEO, or triangle GEO got reduced by a factor of 3 to form triangle RLZ. So our three sets of corresponding sides here are proportional. The ratios of the measures are equivalent. So that means the GE to RL, that ratio is equivalent to EO to LZ, and that ratio is equivalent to GO to RZ. That's what's meant by side, side, side here. So our similarity statement would be the following. I think it goes the way you'd expect. There's kind of a pun in this example. Triangle GEO is similar to triangle RLZ, so GEO rules, of course, and that would be by the side-side-side similarity theorem.
The last way we have to prove that triangles are similar is what's known as the side angle side similarity theorem, or just side angle side similarity for short. And this says that if two sides of one triangle are proportional to two corresponding sides of another triangle, and the included angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar. Now that idea of an included angle is important, and we'll discuss that in our example here. Now I think it makes sense again that when we're matching up corresponding side lengths, the shorter side in this triangle will go with the shorter side in this triangle, and the larger side in this triangle will match up with the larger side in this one as well. Now let's look at the ratios of those corresponding side measures. We have 2 to 3, and we also have 8 to 12. Well that ratio of 8 to 12 we could reduce to 2 to 3 because we can divide out a common factor of 4. So we have two sets of proportional corresponding sides here. So we know QR to SR, that ratio is equivalent to PR to TR. Now one thing to also notice about this diagram is there are vertical angles that we could mark to be congruent. Angle QRP here is congruent to angle SRT over here. And you'll notice that pair of congruent vertical angles happens between those proportional corresponding sides. So that's what's meant by an included congruent angle in the side angle side similarity theorem. So we definitely have a pair of congruent angles that's included between those proportional corresponding sides. Angle QRP is congruent to angle SRT because we know vertical angles are congruent. So we could prove these two triangles are similar using the side angle side similarity theorem. Our similarity statement would be triangle QRP is similar to triangle SRT that would match things up the right way. And our justification would be the side angle side similarity theorem. To end this lesson, here's some practice for you to try where you'll write a similarity statement and a justification.